Hey guys, welcome to our rec room. Have a seat. We were just about to see what's on TV. Capitalism occurs when industry is wholly controlled by private parties, like an individual or corporation. Ah, uh, sorry guys. Looks like this got turned to the moron channel. In the last 500 years, it has changed our priorities, our social interactions, and the way we value our lives. Yes, it's improved all of those things. We now prioritize social interaction, charitable giving, and service to others, whereas before, it was just basic survival. Our social interactions are now global instead of just the hundred or so people around us and are focused on emotional and intellectual fulfillment instead of just to keep ourselves from starving. And we value our lives far more than people in the past who clung to religion for dreams of an afterlife because this life was so miserable. We have lower time preference, increased leisure time, unprecedented happiness levels, and an all-time low in starvation and misery. All thanks to capitalism. Today, some say that as technology evolves the economic landscape, we might be seeing the end of capitalism and a transition into a post-capitalist world. If we see the end of capitalism, we see the beginning of starvation. Just look at Venezuela. So are we nearing the end of capitalism? Well, in recent years, there has definitely been a shift towards creating bigger and better sharing economies to replace outdated commercial enterprise. Major industries like transportation and accommodation have been dramatically overtaken by companies like Uber and Airbnb. That's something capitalism did, you idiot! It was entrepreneurs who set up Bitcoin and Uber and Airbnb and things like that as game-changing alternatives, just as capitalism has always done. Just look at the invention of the cash register, for example. That meant that you didn't have to have the owner or a dedicated business partner manage money and payments. You could just hire people to do it. And that one invention, as much as anything else, resulted in the economic prosperity we enjoy today. And that's hardly the only example. These new alternatives are just the latest in that continuing tradition of capitalism. Even knowledge itself has become shared and editable thanks to Wikipedia. Another capitalist endeavor... Instead of the capitalist ideal of creating something unique and personally profiting off of it, the evolution of collaborative open source projects is something distinctly new. It really isn't. In fact, it's really just continuing the ancient tradition of the bazaar. Bazaars were more than just a marketplace. Merchants, bankers, craftsmen, and customers all worked together to produce the things people needed. They generally had to be made outside the city because governments, as always, engaged in protectionism to prop up favored businesses over the competition. Open source is very much in this tradition. See Eric Raymond's books The Cathedral and the Bazaar and The Magic Cauldron. In the latter, he wrote, An entirely sufficient case for open source development rests on its engineering and economic outcomes, better quality, Higher reliability, lower costs, and increased choice. Lowering the cost of a good tends to increase rather than decrease total investment in the people and infrastructure that sustains it. When the price of cars goes down, the demand for auto mechanics goes up, which is why even those 5% of programmers now compensated by sale value would be very unlikely to suffer in an open source world. The people who lose in the transition won't be programmers, they will be investors who have bet on closed source strategies when they're not economically viable. He also explains why it's a mistake to look at open source as though it were a gift economy. At the same time, capitalist policies have directly resulted in a global financial crisis and rapidly expanding wealth inequality. Jeez, people, it's the other way around! Why can't you people just look at the statistics before mouthing off about them? As more jobs are automated by advancing technology, realistically, fewer people need to work. Oh, jeez, not this again. Look, it's really easy to debunk this crap. A hundred years ago, 95% of us were farmers. Do 95% of us no longer work and are just fed by the 5%? No, because we decided we wanted other things. There are two universal truths, the foundational basis of economics that you just can't get away from. Resources are limited, but desires are unlimited. 
No matter how much you can get robots to provide for people, they're still going to want something more. So there will always be a market for people who want to work at a job, helping someone else meet some of their unfulfilled desires. Also, the availability of information through the internet has removed certain types of businesses. For example, travel agents and video rental clerks. Yeah, and when cars came out, they made buggy whip makers obsolete. What's your point? As a society, we are moving away from expecting companies to provide for us, but instead looking to eliminate the middleman and rely on each other. Oh, who do you think builds and maintains the infrastructure to make this information sharing possible? Who maintains the data centers the websites run on? Who builds and maintains the hardware required to use them? Who programs the websites and apps that provide them? As one TechCrunch article points out, Uber, the largest taxi company, owns no vehicles. Facebook, the world's most popular media owner, creates no content. And Airbnb, the world's largest accommodation provider, owns no real estate. And your barber doesn't own any hair other than his own. So what? So what does a post-capitalist society look like? Venezuela. Well, the biggest shift is from a focus on industrial production to a knowledge and technology-based economy. But again, you're going to need people to make that happen. Your computer didn't magically appear in front of you one day. Your smartphone didn't warp in from another dimension. They were made by people. The information economy requires the creation, expansion, and maintenance of a physical information infrastructure to work. One prediction is that of a technological utopia, where a new tech solves society's largest problems and creates a functional communal paradise. But where does the new tech come from? And what happens when that tech breaks down? Through mutual expression over the internet, ideals like communication, collaboration, and community are combined with the natural online democracy. Democracy is force. None of these involve force. Within this framework, entirely new social practices, morals, and customs will arise out of evolution and necessity. Hate to break it to you, but all of that's a part of capitalism. Capitalism is just the voluntary interaction between people, and that's what's going on. Your failure to see that is what makes you make this extremely short-sighted video, and if you had your way, we'd go from the information age to sticks and stones as soon as the infrastructure broke down and there was no one left who could repair it. Services like Twitter and Amazon have already shown that organic internet growth can change and simplify the way we live. And both of those are capitalist. Even Mastodon is capitalist. If you want to know how we ever got to the economy we have today, check out our two-part video on the history and functions of capitalism. Simply put, capitalism is a social and economic system where both the means of production and any associated trade are privately owned. Yes, and that's just another way of saying that people interact voluntarily with each other, as opposed to being forced by a third party. This isn't the end-all be-all definition of capitalism, but it does illustrate its tenets as opposed to other systems like socialism, communism, fascism, and a bunch of other isms. Yes, those are all based on using force to intervene in those peaceful interactions. And that's why they're not only morally wrong, but can only impoverish people. Because only by allowing people to explore what they think would create the most wealth for them, instead of what you think that should be, can people truly prosper. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, why not hit like and subscribe? And to make sure I can produce more, support this channel on Patreon and Maker Support. And check out all the other great content here, like this video selected especially for you.